Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, we're more connected to each other than you might think, and uh, if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals and pick their brain uh, about uh, current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and conversational fashion. And if you like how we do things around here, and I'm assuming you do, because if you're listening to us right now, you can subscribe to the podcast. You can find us basically wherever you get your podcast. Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, it's all good. Uh, And plus we archive everyone every single one of our uh, episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we'd really appreciate it. Also, please follow us on the social media, as the kids are calling it. You can find us over at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at either at In The Seats or at It's Podcast One for all sorts of updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca for all the latest and greatest in the world of film, uh, television, the moving image at large, because if we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it when you come and read about it. So please stop on by. On this episode, we got a good one. We got an interesting one. Uh, It's about a film called The Universality of It All, a documentary from filmmaker Andres uh, Brunneman, who uh, we had the distinct pleasure of talking with about his film. And it's a film about human migration and just how it affects uh, things from climate change to politics to fertility rates to, to to how us moving around the planet for one reason or another can really have an impact on the world we live in. It was inspired by uh, his uh, longtime friendship with his college roommate, who was a, a Yemeni refugee, and uh, we talked with Andres uh, about this and. Uh, the issues around sort of human migration and just sort of trying to make something that, you know, sparks some critical thinking and just sort of gets us, gets people flowing in the right direction and, and sort of understanding sort of the interconnectedness of the planet that we live on. And it's the one planet that we live on and and how the 21st century is really going to show that more and more. And uh, we had a great talk with Andres, and uh, do check out The Universality of It All. Uh, it's available on DVD and uh, various VOD platforms. But uh, enjoy our talk with uh, Andres, because it certainly is a good one. All right, well, first off, obviously, <laughs> man, thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate this. No, of course. Now, I mean, I guess my first question is... I mean, I was struck by the movie, and I mean, I I think you've made a beautiful piece, and it really does just sort of show how much the world kind of flows into itself, just be it events, be it people, be it migration, be it the whole nine yards. Can you walk me through, I guess, I guess on your end, why you decided you wanted to make a film on this? So, well, first of all, thank you so much for, for the interview and for allowing me to be here. I think it was a topic I was always drawn to. Uh, migration, you know, I myself, uh, you know, there's different types of migrants, forced right. migrants and, and, and economic migrants, but I was born and raised in Costa Rica without uh, being a Costa Rican. My mom was from Mexico and my dad was from Switzerland. So I was always, you know, friends and, and, and close to migrants in, in my own country since an early age. But then as I started, you know, researching more on social topics, I realized that some way or the other, a lot of uh, social issues revolve around the issue of migration or migration is a result of, of some of those issues. And also, as I started doing the, the, the documentary, something happened with my best friend, who was my roommate in, in school, in college. Uh, he became a refugee as I was doing a, a, a documentary about migration. So that inspired me to tell his story, the idea that if I cannot tell the story of my best friend, what my reality is, how can I talk about such a big topic if, if, sure. if I don't analyze that personal part? So yeah, lots of you know different reasons why, I, I guess. Is there anything in this process that maybe sort of shocked or surprised you? Because I mean, I think for me, it was just, 
I, maybe sort of the interconnectivity of it all, how one can, th- can affect one thing and then it'll affect something else and then so on and so forth. Yeah. I, I guess what I tell people is that I started with some perspective of what migra- whether migration is good or bad. Yeah. And I guess what I found along the way is that migration is neither good or bad. It mm. just is. You know, yeah. you can have problems having lots of migration or you can have big uh, benefits having lots of migrations. It really depends on the demographic and economic needs of the receiving country and whether those needs are met by uh, certain migrants coming in or not. And so I guess that's that was my biggest learning, so to speak, realizing that, you know, it's not that it's something good or bad. It's just that it's the result of many, many other issues. And, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. And what we have to do as a society is uh, understand why it happens. And if in the case, if it's too much migration that is happening, it's how do you make it better in the origin countries for it not to happen, essentially? Well, and I mean, I think that was an important thing to highlight because, I mean, it feels like you traveled all across the world, more or less, to <laughs> to really tell this story. And I mean, were there any moments that, because obviously there are heartbreaking moments for the people who are migrating, and then there are scary moments for the people who are accepting migrants who don't want to accept the migrants. And I mean, yeah. like, it, during the entire process, like, I got to imagine, it must have been hard to sort of rein in your emotions either one way or the other, because you're being pulled in kind of both directions. Exactly, exactly. And 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 I guess, like, that's why I answered in this first question that I realized that it's better to be neutral, you know, and, and, and also coming from a perspective where you, I want to understand, you know, in our political spectrum or this political spectrum that they put for us to decide right or left, understanding why uh, the different sides, you know, their motivations, why are they pro, why they are against and, and really understand them and trying to find some middle ground, you know, and, and I think we lost touch with that middle ground that we all need especially when it comes to migration. It's a very polarized topic. And after, you know, traveling to different places, seeing like the correlations, I think the moment that truly impacted me was actually going to the the slums in my own country, places that I hadn't been, you know, and, and realizing something that I say in the film that diversity is not only about ethnicity or, or, or cultural diversity, it's also about economic standing. And sometimes we know better, you know, other countries than what is happening actually like right next to us. Um, and so I think that's what really changed me is like, I lived my whole life in this country, but I haven't seen that part, you know? So even in your own country, you don't know the full reality. Why do you think we've sort of lost the the ability to be objective? Because it does seem, especially when it surrounds this issue, it's either one way or the other. I think it's a lack of understanding, you know, and, and, and I think it's, uh, and I call the film the universality of it all, because I think what we have to do is learn how to um, connect different topics with one another. For example, there's a part in my film where I talk about the connection that climate change has on migration patterns. And that is something that would totally change the conversation on climate, on, on mitigation of climate change. So I think it's the information. I think we're just fed with, you know, migrants are coming, you either receive them or not receive them. And it's not about that, really. It's not about like just open the borders or just have borders. It's much more complex. And if the public, uh, and especially, you know, like policymakers could communicate what, you know, consequences each decision has, we will be much better informed to take decisions and we wouldn't fall on, you know, the, the populistic side of both sides, so to speak. It really does feel like the film has a, at its core a very logical sense to it. And it tries to sort of keep and hold that. I'm kind of curious. Was that something you found in the process of making the film or was it was it sort of the ideal from day one? It's like, I can't veer too far one way or the other. I've got to sort of, like you said at the beginning, find the middle ground. I think, you know, I think it's both ways, partly because, you know, one side is me always trying to find the middle ground in everything, you know. But right. at the same time, I, I started the film with a different mindset 
uh, more of like, oh, I want to find a solution, you know, the, finding out who will tell me like, what's the right solution to, to take. But then I realized, you know, so uh, the word solution is to a conflict. And again, the movement of people is not a conflict. It's exactly, a result yeah. of a conflict. Exactly. Yeah. So there's no solution to keeping people from moving other than like keeping them without freedom. So I, I think I didn't know I was going to find that. Definitely. It, it was more of the research, the process and, and really spending time thinking about this, you know, macro ideas. And I guess also what was very interesting for me was being able in the film to balance between the micro you know, the relation and friendship that I had with my friend who is a refugee in that personal personal and intimate story with the bigger story of migration worldwide. So that balance between the micro and the macro was what allowed me to discover all the things that I discovered. So were you drawn to the issue first or were you drawn to filmmaking first? Like what came first? Was it the chicken or the egg? Oh, filmmaking. Okay. Filmmaking. Oh yeah. Like I've always, you know, and... Migration is, let's say, a topic that has always been close to me. But I, I guess what I love about filmmaking is that you become, you have like a master's degree after every project, you know, like you, mm. you dive into it, you know, you research, you research, you become an expert and then move to the next one, you know. And, and so, yeah, like migration will always be a topic that is there. But, you know, on a personal note, like I want to keep doing documentaries about different topics, even film or or series, you know, I, I don't limit myself by film because it's also some sort of documentary essay about how I analyze uh, my perspective on the world that I felt it was very important to start, you know, start my career with, with, with a film like that and then move into, you know, different formats from there on. What do you think it is about the documentary form that allows for, I mean, at least from my perspective, it feels like more freedom in terms of telling a story like this, because, I mean, if you tried to do this as a narrative or a scripted thing, it would have, it feels like it may would have tried to play a little more on sort of emotions and human emotions where this can have the human aspect to it, but it's still very much based in like the logic of it as well. Yeah. I, I, I think what I love about the process of documentary compared to, you know, shooting fiction right. is that you're kind of doing it the other way of writing when you're editing, like you're discovering what the film is about when you edit, which I guess some filmmakers that are doing fiction might have like this, like, oh my God, I'm discovering what the film is about. But most likely that's done from the script stage and everything is so planned and there's the actors and so many pieces involved that, when you go to set, it has to be as fast as possible two days. And that's the film. And everybody knows what they're going. Whereas in documentary, you kind of gather everything. And then once you're sitting in the editing room, you know, I think you discover what your film is there. And you're writing it right there and there. Um, and I think that just changes everything. <laughs> no, for sure. And I mean, it, it's one of those things where... I, you can feel the immediacy of it. And I mean, in just in watching the film and seeing how you get all these topics very much interconnected with one another, but also show us sort of the history of the world as well. And how these, again, these things cycle, these things repeat. I'm kind of curious, do you think film is the best way to sort of put to, to illustrate something like this. Cause I'm always like, when I see something like this, it's like, this could have been a series or this could have even been an essay or a print piece. I watch a film like this and I see, this is such a beautiful and really sort of salient way of showing us how we're all really connected to one another, especially in a world this day and age where, you know, people want to build walls and do this, that, and the other. And it's like, none of that works. We've tried it before. Can't we learn from this? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I feel that the style of the, the film uh, is, is very connected to how, I, how my mind works and how right. people's minds work, I think. I think our mind is this weird montage, you know? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And ideas. And only when you look at them like this, you know, like expose what your ideas are, you can make those connections and understand the bigger picture. And that's kind of like what I wanted to try, how messy our mind really is with one idea here, one idea there. 
And at some point during, a lot of people tell me that they're watching the universality of it all and kind of midway, they're like, where is this guy going with all of this? You know, like, how is this going to end? Like, what is the point? And, and at the end, somehow I managed to wrap it yeah, all up. Exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think that like that is like a soup of ideas and you get the connections that you made when you watch it. And that's, I mean, that's, that, that's the beautiful thing about the visual storytelling. Like, it, you know, it can have problems, but at the end of the day, if it's rewarding and it tastes good, you know, it's, that's the that's the important thing and i mean i'm kind of curious for you as a filmmaker like what made like what made you want to get into this business what made you want to tell films was there like a moment when you were young was there a certain movie i i honestly don't know like really i i, I it's like i've been making films since i've been five or six years old like i had like a small video cassette camera that i used to use as a kid and my grand i never got to know my grandfather but he left behind a lot of lights and you know right. tripods and things and it was just organic to the point that i never really asked myself like oh what should i study i don't know it's like i always it was film it was storytelling um in every format like i don't want to live in myself to be like i'm just documentary filmmaker or director of this it's like film is this soup that i'm talking about this yeah. soup of ideas and, and creating so it was very organic for me. I always knew that I wanted it somehow. Well, you know what, man? Thanks for making the soup because it, 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 <laughs> it, it like the whole thing really works. I mean, it's a little chaotic at moments, but it comes together in this real sort of salient way that makes it feel personal and emotional that something that we can all relate to and sort of share with other people. And I'm glad Thank it's out you. there in the universe now. And thanks for the time today, man. This was fun no for sure and, and and thank you so much and i really hope your audience you know gets a chance to see and taste the soup and see how it tastes <laughs> hey, into that brother thanks again yeah, thank you and don't forget to to visit our friends over at bay street video for all your dvd blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well over at 1172 bay street toronto ontario canada you can give them a call at 416-964-9088 that's 416-964-9088 or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your dvd and blu-ray needs